Just a couple of teachers Just doing a thing Speaking slowly So you can understand Just a couple of teachers Just doing a thing Gonna give you that English nice and slow Gonna give it to you nice and slow All right. Nice and slow. Nice and slow, getting closer and closer to episode 100. 100. 100. 100. I actually have a topic. You do? For today's episode. Oh, exciting. Yes, it's about your school days. School days. And the Australian style. Oh, yeah. I was talking recently. Hmm. On my other podcast, Go Go Ape Kaiwa. Check it out. Check, 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 check it out. Check, 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 check and it out. Anyway, I was talking about how, in my experience in Canada, the classrooms that I went to for elementary school, junior high school, high school, mm. almost all the classes, we sit in groups at tables. Oh, okay. So in Japan, most classes, maybe almost all, yes, kids sit at in single desks, right, facing forward, and they keep that seat for the entire year. Do they? I think so. Oh, okay. you don't. You don't uh, go changing around. You don't change desks. You got your desk, and that's always yours. That's yours. You gotta mm-hmm. carve your name in it. <laughs> Carve your name in with yeah, a knife. With a knife. Ben. Or just really hard with yeah. a pen. Ben I was. Think I probably here. did that. Oh, we all did. Yeah. The thing in, in Canada, the kids sit in groups facing each other. We don't face the teacher. Just in my experience. That's for all classes, like except, history, math. Except math. What's the math situation? Everyone facing forward. Okay. Because the teacher is teaching on the board and math is basically just watching the teacher and studying. So wait, in the other subjects, some students have their back to the board? Yeah, um, not to the board, but it would maybe their side. Okay. The groups would be about four or five kids. Okay. And there'd be like, you know, Five or six groups. Right. About 30 kids in a class. 30 kids? 20 to 30. Damn, man, that's high numbers. Is it? Yeah. That's um, normal where where I grew up. In Australia, in, in my particular school, I mean, probably 12 to 16. Oh, that's really small. Small classes. Wow. Yeah, we don't have many people. So, a few questions. Sure. First of all, sitting in groups... Some people contacted uh, Gogo Kaiwa on Twitter mm-hmm. and said, oh, I'm in America and everyone sits same as Japan, facing forward. Do they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about Australia? Um, I can remember two styles of table arrangement. No desks. Just a normal table. So you have like big tables yeah. rather than single desks. That's right. I think one table seats two people. Yeah. And it was either rows of tables. But do they all face the same direction? All facing the board. All facing forward. The teacher, yes. Mm-hmm. That was one type, but more common was a U shape. Ah, uh, yeah, I had that too. Yeah. Where the teacher is in the middle and some yes. of the classes or some of the desks are facing across. That's right. And some of them are facing forward. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a U-shaped table arrangement, exactly, where the teacher can walk around the middle and check work. A U-shape. Whatever. Yeah. Some yeah. classes I had, I think some science classes I had were like that. That was definitely the most common the well, most common. Definitely. Uh, science, though, we had a proper science room with high desks. 
a laboratory style, a room? laboratory style, uh, but it was pretty run down, uh, old yeah. Frankenstein yeah. laboratory. Yes, so the science laboratory was fun because each desk, each bench, had a uh, a gas um, valve or a gas tap. Yeah. Yeah, which you would plug in a plastic hose to a, I can't remember these science words, uh, a flame that you could heat chemicals like with burner. a Bunsen burner. Thank you. And the Bunsen burners were so fun because you could adjust it so it was wait. like a candle flame. They would let you play with fire. Oh, yeah. Really? There was some. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You're saying, in, how old were you? Uh, this is from age, I guess, 13. 13? Yeah, from and 13. they let you play with gas and fire? Shocking, isn't it? Uh, there were yeah. a few times they had to evacuate the school <laughs> because kids just left the taps on. Oh, so the whole room fills with gas. Yep, the whole fucking school fills with gas, the whole floor really, of the school. Really dangerous. Did the kids do it on purpose? Oh, yeah. We had some bad kids in our school. Um, you guys are playing with gas and fire and... Oh, man, we used to burn the paint on the tables um, and burn all kinds of stuff because you could adjust the flame so it was like a like a jet flame, like a rocket. Um, good times. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Looking back, But really were you crazy. all facing the front? <laughs> Science room? Yes. Really? Yes. So you're always facing the front? Always facing the front, except for U-shape where you're side on. Okay. Could you choose your table? Um, some classes you'd choose. Uh, other times the teacher would assign your seat. Yeah. And um, you'd usually change seats, change groups. Okay. Sometimes you'd change for activities in the class. Right. Sometimes you'd change like permanently. Because it sounds fun having your table with your friends. Yeah. You know, that's your little sometimes, group. Yeah. Sometimes you would. Um. I guess I always, of course, tried to sit with my friends, but the teacher... Hey, Ben, yeah. you can't sit with your friends. You guys can't function together. Stop playing with the <laughs> gas and the fire. Gas and the fire, yeah. And everything. Anyway, mm. okay, so Australia, everyone faces forward, except some classes have a U-shape. Well, most have a U-shape Okay. in my school. So maybe it's just Canada. Who knows? Maybe it's just my city. Maybe. That has this style of kids sitting in groups. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. huh. was it, wasn't it like a special school? No, a public, <laughs> public elementary school and a public junior high school plus high school. Like, I didn't have junior high school. It's elementary school until grade seven, and mm -hmm. then high school, grade eight to 12. Oh, we do six and six. Six and six? Yeah. Uh, so when you're 12 years old, you're in the same school as someone who's 18 years old. Yeah. Um, I think that's a bad idea. It can be. I think it was bad in my case. Was it? Yeah, because ki p kids were, you know... Doing drugs and stuff, smoking marijuana. This is God. normal high school stuff. Kicking, so when, kicking moose. When you're 12 or 13 years old, I don't know, probably better not to mix with kids that are 18, 17, 18. No, depends on the kid, depends on the school. I have a question for you. What's that? From me. Okay. <laughs> As somebody who grew up. Uh, with parents as vets. Yep. Yep, you know a lot about it. Uh, so this is a bit sad. Sorry to bring it down. Uh, the other day, um, I was walking my dog in the park, beautiful Nima, and I saw a lady and I recognised her. I often see her in the park. She also has a French bulldog. And Nima and her dog get along really well. 
Oh. Yeah. Um, they often play. They've been playing together for, for many years. Oh. Yeah. Really good friends. That's nice. Really nice. Nima has friends. Yeah. He does somehow. <laughs> so in the other day, she was pushing a dog stroller, a dog pram, right, uh, which I'd never seen before because she's usually walking her dog. So I thought that's a bit strange and I went up to her and I saw she was crying and next to her was her husband walking with a bunch of flowers in his hand. I thought, this is weird. And I looked inside. She was crying, strolling along with a, a baby stroller what, with a dog in it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, her husband was carrying flowers and she's crying? Yes. So I, Some kind of doggy funeral parade yes, or something? exactly. So I looked into the, the dog pram and their... The stroller. Pram. And there is this beautiful little French bulldog died. Dead. What? Yeah. And she was taking it on its last walk. The dead body? The dead body. Um, and That's weird. Man. That's weird, right? That's a little weird. That's weird. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, dead body? No. Right. But some people, I've heard of people get their pet stuffed. Yeah. That's even kind of more weird. That's weirder. That's so what I mean by that is basically you turn your dog or cat into a statue. Yes. Using their real fur. And they always look really unnatural. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I mean when I said get them stuff. Mm, taxidermy. Empty out the inside and stuff it full of... Yeah. Full of what? Cotton, maybe? Is it I cotton? Don't know. Newspaper? Who knows? <laughs> Old <laughs> newspapers. Other dead animals. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it was shocking and uh, I felt quite emotional. Uh, you know, I'd known this lady and this dog for a long time. She's walking there with her yeah. dead dog. And, and she said, touch it. Touch her. Uh, and I was like, no mm, thanks. I'm okay. Um, did you though? You don't want to be rude. Actually, I did. I put my hand on her. And of course, my and son. She woke up. <laughs> <laughs> April oh Fool. Ben, you've <laughs> saved our dog. Ah, uh, yes. The touch of Benky Boy Ben. Yes. The touch of life. Live. <laughs> Rise. Rise, dirty dog. So Rui came over and he was confused. Mm -hmm. So was I. And anyway, I lifted Nima up and he immediately put his ears down. Uh, he realized. Um, he sensed it. Oh, yeah. So Nima, as soon as he saw the dead dog, yeah. he knew right away. It was sad, man. That's a dead dog. And he was sad for the rest of the day, just Poor in Nima. his bed. Yeah, his friend. Uh, so we took one last picture together. She wanted me to hold Nima next to the it's dead dog. It's weird. Pretty weird, man. Full respect to this lady. She's lovely. If yeah. you're listening. You know, <laughs> but when you're dealing with a loss, yeah. some someone or something pet that you love. Yep. You know, you can't judge how people react because when you're a human, we have a set way. You know, we have ceremonies. Dealing with grief. Yeah, our culture yes. already has that. Yeah. But when it's a pet, you know, it feels like, what do we do? Well, I mean, the Japanese way is to spend time with the body. Uh, so in that way, oh. it's kind of culturally understandable, okay. I suppose. Anyway, I, it was kind of sweet, but also very creepy. Yeah. Strange. I mean, yeah. it must have been fresh. Pretty fresh, eh? <laughs> Fre Pretty I mean, like freshly dead. <laughs> Put that knife and fork away. Because you don't want to wait very long. You wouldn't. No. No, no, you wouldn't. No. Um, yeah, it's weird. I mean, imagine if my wife died and I put her in a wheelchair. No. You, you saw me coming. And you say, hey, hey, Ben. And you're crying. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you're like, what's going on? It's taking her for one last trip to the supermarket. <laughs> That's weird, man. <laughs> weird, man. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, bury, bury that, bury that thing. 
Yeah, I guess that's the common way to do it in the West is you bury it. Yeah. Yeah. A burn it. Usually bury just it. in the backyard, too. Just stick it in the. Yeah, hang on, we talking people or animals? Animals, yeah, of course. How you ben. do it in Canada. No. Or if it's a small pet, people often bury it. Yes. It's one of the worst things when I was working in an animal clinic. Yeah. Is when people's dog is put down. Yes. Like euthanized. Mm hmm. You know, put to sleep forever. Yeah. You know, people are so sad and crying. And as a staff, you have to ask them, like, what do you want to do with Fluffy's body? I don't know. How about put it in your car and and forget about it? You have to tell them. Or chop it up with a chainsaw, please. (laughs) (laughs) You have to give them the options. (laughs) Do you want a cremation? cremation? Do you want private? Burial? Do you want chainsaw? <laughs> ashes put in a fancy urn? Yeah. A regular urn. Urn is the jar for ashes. Yes. What do you want to do with it? And they're like, <gasps> how much is the yeah. premium? What, what's the cheapest uh, one? <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Or you could just take it home. Yeah. It's up to you. Doggy bag. That's why I asked you, because uh, you are an expert. I'm not an expert. That sounds a little weird, but I wouldn't judge. Oh, I don't. And uh, like I said, full respect. Um, she, she'll be missed. All right. Well, let's change gears for a moment. It's enough dead dogs. Ooh, time to get funky. Dead dogs all day long. <laughs> Couple of dogs. Hopefully, about dead dogs. Nothing dead about it. Fresh about dead dogs. That's the exception. (laughs) But these teachers' dogs are full of life, and we're coming to answer your questions now. Ben, you're from Australia. Lucky me. Have you ever touched a koala bear? I have. Me too. Yeah. It was so soft. They don't like it. They don't like people. The one that I did Mm -hmm. loved me. Was it dead? No, it was a baby. (laughs) It was a baby. It was small. And it put its arms up and gave me a hug. Yeah. My heart melted. Did it? Yeah, because it looked me right in the eyes and gave me a hug. Sweet. And I held it like, (laughs) oh. Yeah. Did you pull up your T-shirt and put put your nipple in its mouth? Give it some milk? I did not. Okay. I did not. That's what you're supposed to do with koalas. Next time. I did not. Question is, have you ever touched the koala bear's ears? Uh, Because I've never touched the ears. Well, the time I held a koala was a kind of a traumatic experience for me. Well, you had some trauma from a... Cute little koala. Long story short, a school trip maybe. We went to a native animal zoo. Uh, They said, it's your turn to hold the koala. So you guys just passed a koala around a circle? I didn't really want to. Koalas get stressed. They don't like interacting with people. They stay high in their tree. Right. Yeah. So this koala was... An adult, full-size adult koala, which is a big, it's quite big. And it it was obviously scared. Its eyes were very wide. And it was attached to me and its claws, powerful claws, I remember digging into my shoulder, like under the bone, really strong. And I was like, (laughs) I think I've had enough. And then as the staff was pulling it off me, pissed all over me um pro- like a, at least a liter a liter of koala piss a liter a lot it just kept going Warm and koala as, piss. as it was getting carried away it would just continued pissing so a bunch of other people held it no problem no problem and then they passed it to you i think one other girl got pissed on and the koala grabbed your shoulder <laughs> looked you right in the eyes 
and pissed all over all you. All over me. I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude, this is not my fault. I'm just a kid. Uh, Innocent child covered in koala piss. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, the question was just if you've ever touched a koala's ears. No, I couldn't wait to get it off me. Yeah. yeah. They look soft. Did you you touch the ears or you didn't? No, I no. just held it. I didn't pet it or anything. Oh, okay. I just held it That's gently. Good. You're a good mother. Yeah. Good mother quokka. <laughs> mother quokka. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. It's a new new term. Okay. Uh, yeah, don't hold koalas, guys. If you see one, well, you better not to. It was a great experience for me. I'm happy, but who knows? Maybe the koala didn't enjoy it. Um, maybe not. And well, I'll tell you what you shouldn't do, which I've mentioned before: never put your hand in a kangaroo's pouch. I've done that. Big mistake. Why did you put your hand in a kangaroo's pouch? Because I was offered ten dollars. <laughs> Ten dollar e dues. So, so someone bet you? Yep. They said, I hey, bang, put your hand right in the pouch, and yeah. I'll give you ten bucks. My friend's dad, if I remember correctly. Really? Maybe my dad. I was Sorry. young. So mm. did he have a heavy accent? Oh yeah. Like that? A real bush accent. Really? I tell you what, Ben, I'll give you ten bucks if you put your hand in that there roo pouch. <laughs> the roo pouch? Yeah. Kangaroo pouch. Stick it in that roo pocket. So what happened? Uh, I put my hand in there. Kangaroo didn't even move. It was lying down. And I put my hand in his pocket and it was sticky. I guess her pocket. Sticky, milky, really hot. And my hand smelled like shit. Oh, so the male kangaroos don't have pouches? No, I don't think so. Only the female. Yeah. Oh, I guess. And there's, there's nipples inside the pouch. Right. Right. You know. That's and, where the babies drink the milk. Yeah. So it's disgusting in there. It's nasty. It's all nasty, warm milk. Rotten milk. Oh, gross. Years of rotten milk in the Australian sun. Well, there you go. We don't know what koala bear's ears feel like, but yep. uh, kangaroo pouches. Never put your hand in a roo pouch. Stay away. Never put your dick in a didgeridoo. All right. <laughs> Don't disrespect the didgeridoo. Okay, Ben. With your dirty dick. Well, it's time to wrap it up. All right. Thank you for your knowledge. Endless. And your cooperation. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Come to 55freebird.com. Uh, send me a message. Ask a question. Five-star review on Apple or Spotify. Yep. Come to SoundCloud for fucking Ben's music. Get on to SoundCloud. I'm How about a new deadline? A new deadline? For your Spotify. Okay, all right. Let's do it. Let's make it interesting. Yeah, sure. Let's, put Let's some... just do it. How about that? Okay, fine. We'll do it. We'll do it. So what's the new deadline? New deadline is... What's the date? Today is March 4th. March 4th. Look at you with your fast date knowledge. Friday, March 4th. Friday, March 4th, 2022. Uh, clock says Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Damn Chinese clock. They built it wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And All I right. can't change it. What the fuck? When you set the date, March 4th, it goes Friday. Hang on. Is this... So you can't change the year? You, you can change everything except the day. You can't, that means you can't. So the change. day is attached to the date. That is so, so dumb. The Saturday is attached to <laughs> March 4th. It doesn't matter what so year it is. When you change March 4th, 5th, 6th, yep. it changes to Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That is lazy. They, they thought it was a leap year. Well, they thought every year is the same. Well, no, it's programmed till February 29th. Okay. Only. Do you understand? I do. So. When it was March 1st, yes. suddenly it said February 29th. And I was like, hey, it's not February 29th, it's March 1st. Does so it- you, you have to choose which you want to be correct, the date or the day. You can't have both. Yeah. So I chose the date correct and 
The day is wrong. So it's permanently set to leap year. Yes. That's all. Set to, there's a leap year, 29th days in February. Yep. So I noticed this problem a few days ago. The only mode it has is leap year mode. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyway, um, still nice clock. Oh, clock. Great clock. But Can, it's broken. <laughs> dangerous. If you think well, you don't I have don't to know. work, or man, I wouldn't. I wouldn't risk it. Well, now I know, so I'm not going to make a mistake. Yeah, you never make those kind of mistakes. Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Anyway, Spotify. Spotify March coming 31st. 31st. Uh, let's say, hey, first day of April, April Fools. But this time it won't be a trick. It'll be true. Okay. That's it. I promise. Instagram, all my weirdos. Yes, join the parade of weirdos and go go freaks. F V E Teacher Talk Instagram. Waiting for you. All right, guys, see you next time. Mm -hmm.